Guys, today is a dark day for crypto. You are seeing right in front of your eyes right now the USDC stablecoin. What was supposed to be the only safe stablecoin is right now collapsing in front of our eyes. And of course, this draws a lot of parallel to Terra USD, which also started to collapse a little bit, a little bit, and then went down to zero. So people still have post-traumatic stress about this and are now panicking, which is understandable. Guys, today I am going to give you the explanation about why we find ourselves in this situation. I'm going to talk about what ramifications this has for the crypto industry. I'm also, of course, going to talk you through what I am personally doing. I'm going to talk you through different scenarios so that you can be safe in this crazy environment because this is... How, no matter how you twist and turn it, this is absolutely crazy what's going on right now in front of our eyes. So guys, make sure to stick around. You need to watch this video from the beginning until the end. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Chris, bringing you cryptocurrency videos every day, teaching you how to make money in this market. If you're new to the channel, then make sure to subscribe and activate the bell right now. And guys, what a crazy 24 hours we have had since my last video. So you have seen Bitcoin have a bounce here at $20,000 went up to $21,000. And in the middle of all of this, the orange box is still holding up the Bitcoin price. So this is absolutely fantastic that this can actually still, no matter how much the entire crypto market is crashing, orange box still holding strong. But let's go to um, my last video. So I was talking about how this crypto crash we were seeing yesterday was just at the beginning because you had a massive contagious risk in the market. And right after this video, or a couple of hours after this video, you saw one of the largest banks in the US actually fail. The largest single failure since 2008. So, just like I said in my video yesterday, this is not about crypto entirely. This is more about the actual risk in the traditional financial system. So, how did we end up here and what does this have to do with USDC crashing. So guys, let's uh, let's kick it off here. So why did Silicon Valley Bank crash? Well, we know that Silvergate crashed a couple of days prior to that. Silicon Valley Bank, one of the largest um, banks in the US, specifically serving a lot of early startups, a lot of VC companies were using Silicon Valley Bank. So why did it crash and why did the FDIC, which is basically the US uh, government, step in? They said they stepped in yesterday and they said, hey, look, at Silicon Valley Bank, you don't know what you are doing. You have a lot of money in your bank that belongs to customers. We're shutting you down and we are taking over. So FDIC, they insure people's money up to $250,000. The problem is that most of the money that people held in Silicon Valley Bank was uh, not $250,000, it was much more than that. And 98% of the funds that is in Silicon Valley Bank is uninsured, meaning that they are not going to be bailed out by the FDIC uh, because they have that $250,000 per account limit. And most accounts have more than that. Okay, so why did we find ourselves in this situation to begin with? Well, it comes back to treasury bonds. So what banks do is that they want to earn money on their, on their money, basically. So what they do is they buy treasury bonds, which is basically uh, you giving um, money to the US government in exchange for a interest payment. So in this case, for a 20%, like let's say you give uh, the US uh, treasuries $1 million, well, then you are earning about 4% every year on that. And then after 20 years, you get that money back. So you get the 1 million back, but every year up until that, you get this amount. And for 30 years, you get this amount. And there's also five years, there's two years, there's even three month bonds as, as well. But uh, yeah, banks, they invest in these bonds because they are risk-free, right? They are guaranteed by the US government. This is what they do with the customer funds. There's only one problem. Uh, the interest rates right now are 4% on these bonds, approximately 4%. But back a couple of years ago, remember, this was at zero. It was at like 0.1%, 0.2%. So very, very small amounts of yield. So what actually happens is that these banks, they invested, when the rates were close to zero, they invested billions of dollars into these treasury bonds. 
And what actually happens is that when the bond yields goes up, and they've gone up because the rates have been going up, we all know the interest rates have been going up. Uh, so the value of the bonds, let's say they invested $1 million into the bonds, that value actually goes down because you can also sell this bond, even though you can hold it until the maturity, which is 20 years, 30 years, 10 years, whatever it may be. You're also able to sell it on the secondary market saying, hey, I have this 20-year uh, treasury bond. I invested $1 million. Um, I can sell it to you for, let's say, $950 million. So I'm losing uh, $50 million because the yield have gone up. So as the yield goes up, the value of those $1 million you invested at a lower rate, it goes down. And so this is what happened with these banks, with Silvergate, with Silicon Valley, and it's actually happening with several other banks as well, is that they invested into the treasury bonds at very low uh, interest rates, so the bonds value have been going down, and then people start withdrawing their money, they want to get their money back, and they have to sell those bonds at massive losses to be able to uh, raise that liquidity to honor withdrawals. So this is how we ended up here, a little bit of a kind of deeper explanation, so this is why uh, Silicon Valley Bank had to shut down, basically, because they were having to sell those bonds at a massive loss and they were not able to... It just created too big of a hole in their balance sheet. Kind of what you saw with Celsius, right? Same thing with Celsius. They had a lot of funds stuck in different staking programs. They could not access those funds. And so the bank run collapsed Celsius. You're seeing the same thing with these banks. By the way, all of this could have been prevented by having the treasury yields not at 20 year, but at like three months or six months. Um, so yeah, this could have been prevented. So it's just bad practices from this bank. Very incompetent in my book from, from the information we have. Now, the problem is also, and how this relates to crypto. Well, let's talk about the broader market first. Nearly half of all US venture capital backed startups were involved with Silicon Valley Bank. So Silicon Valley Bank was the go-to bank for startups. So this means that all of the startups that have their money on Silicon Valley Bank, they will not be able to process withdrawals. They will not be able to pay their employees. And so they will go bankrupt. This is how it's looking right now, unless the US government comes in and bail out this bank. Uh, we will see. Now it's weekend. We will see on Monday what happens. The FDIC, the US government, are now having this weekend to uh, see what the best path forward is. So we know that this is a huge blow to the entire US um, kind of startup scene. But how does this relate to USDC going down to 88 cents and the crypto market crashing? Well, if you look at USDC, and this is a key thing, if you look at USDC, they have also treasury bonds. So they have short dated treasury bonds, meaning they expire in three months or six months. So that is absolutely the best way to do it. So uh, that's fine. But they also have 11 billion in cash. The problem is that parts of these 11 billion is actually at, yes, you guessed it, Silicon Valley Bank. So how much of that? And uh, yesterday, Circle, they didn't. This was very worrisome because Circle did not post a uh, statement saying how much money they had on Circle, uh, sorry, on Silicon Valley Bank. But now we know that they have 3.3 billion out of the $40 billion in USD cash reserves at Silicon Valley Bank. So a sizable portion of the uh, cash they have is actually at Silicon Valley Bank. So $3.3 billion. Now, is it warranted? Let's say, okay, let's say that they lost all of this. Let's say Silicon Valley Bank, poof, all of the money is gone. They lose $3.3 billion out of the uh, $40 billion. That's roughly, I mean, a little bit uh, less than 10%. So my conclusion is that the market is overreacting a little bit because 10% would be 90 cents. Okay, so even if they lost everything, I, I have to re reinstate that. Even if they lost all of the $3.3 billion they have at, Silver, uh, at Silicon Valley Bank, that is still uh, not as much as the market is expecting them to lose. So the market is expecting them to basically lose all of those funds, which is not going to happen. We know that they have U.S. treasuries, so over time they're still earning that yield on three point or thirty-two billion dollars. So they will be able to uh, to fill that hole a little bit at least. But also remember, 
the Silicon Valley Bank, it's not likely that they're going to lose all of that money. They still have a lot of assets. So let's say out of the $3.3 billion they have at Silver uh, at Silicon Valley Bank, they might get back maybe, I don't know, let's say $1.5 billion, which means that they are only losing $1.5 billion out of the $40 billion uh, that they have in reserves. So I think the market is overreacting a little bit, but of course I understand that because the market still has post-traumatic stress from Terra Classic USD. Uh, but this is a completely different thing because this was an algorithmic stablecoin. This was backed by nothing. The USDC is still backed by something. They have US treasuries and they have funds at the bank. They just cannot uh, withdraw those funds. And the bank itself has some kind of a hole, which is more like a liquidity issue. Because remember, the bank still has these long-term uh, treasury bonds. So what I think is going to happen here is that most likely the US government is probably going to intervene here because if this has, and this is the big danger, if this cascades further, if other banks collapse, well, maybe that is what the market is pricing in here, that other banks could collapse and that would be more of a disaster. But then at that point, I do think that the US are going to step in. Are they going to step in and bail out Silicon Valley Bank itself? May Probably not. But if the contagion spreads, then they are most likely going to do that. Now, let's continue and talk about Josef Gentile, which is the Chief Administrative Office, uh, Officer at SVB Securities. So, um, he was working with Lehman Brothers in 2007. Remember, Lehman Brothers, the bank that collapsed in 2008, causing the great financial crisis. So, uh, yeah, is it a coincidence that his bank is now failed here as well? Uh, probably not. In all of this, Elon Musk is actually open to the idea of, um, of, of uh, buying Silicon Valley Bank and making it a digital bank. So we will see what comes out of that. But uh, one thing I will also say is that the CEO of Silicon Valley Bank actually sold $3.5 million worth of stocks over the last two weeks, just before the collapse. So what does this mean? Is this a coincidence? Well, probably not. So Adam Cochran here is making the case that uh, USDC is going to bounce back and that people are overreacting because Circle, they are still honoring redemptions, remember? At least on Friday, uh, they are still honoring redemptions. So you could still take your USDC to, uh, to Circle and get real US dollars. So if that continues, well, naturally, the USDC price is going to go back to $1 if people are actually able to redeem, um, redeem uh, that for, for real dollars at $1 value. So then it is going to. But the question is, of course, for how much longer are they able to redeem uh, the USDC for real dollars? And that is what's causing the panic right now. You never want to be the last one holding the USDC bag if it is actually indeed going to go down to zero, which again, I make the case here that I don't think that that is going to happen because again, they still have US treasuries, they still have this and the money that they are potentially going to lose in the Silicon Valley um, bank um, liquidation, uh, potential liquidation, uh, it is still at most $3.3 billion um, and more realistically, maybe like $1 billion, which it's just a couple of percent, not even a couple of percent out of, out of the entire USDC here. So yes, guys, even though bad things are happening in the crypto space, I need to kind of be sober still and give you what I think is actually going to happen here. And the fact that they are not passing redemption is an indicator that they are not in that bad of a situation, just trying to figure out why the market is thinking otherwise. The concern, though, is that it is not just Silvergate and Silicon Valley Bank. It's all the banks. None of them have any equity. They are completely wiped out, but... Um, yeah, because of this fake accounting, basically held to maturity securities, again, treasury bonds having, you know, 20 years, 30 years at 0% interest rate. How crazy. I mean, these banks, and we are talking about crypto taking risk. Now we're talking about banks failing and being incompetent like this. Um, but yeah, you have a lot of banks holding it. This is the risk you're seeing right now in the market. A lot of securities held to maturity. Some are available for sale. This is what you want to see. Available for sale securities, not held to maturity because they lose value as the interest rates are going up. And the most important thing the FDIC and the US government can do right now is make the receivership as short as possible. There are thousands of US startups that banked at Silver Silicon Valley Bank often as their sole bank. 250,000 per account is not going to last long. 
So, uh, yeah, we need to see, just like I said, we need to see what happens here on Monday because 30% of the companies exposed to Sil Silicon Valley Bank can't make payroll in the next 30 days. So we need to have a resolution as soon as possible. And there's still that possibility that the US government are actually going to step in and bail out Silicon Valley Bank because, as I explained previously, 90% of the US startups are are, um, or was it 50%? Yeah, 50%, nearly half of all US venture capital-backed startups were banking with Silicon Valley Bank. So do the US want over 50% of their innovative startups to blow up? Probably not. The case against that is that crypto is under attack. I posted this thread yesterday. We know that the US have been trying to kill crypto, Operation Choke Point 2.0, and some of the things you're seeing right now is actually as a result of Operation Choke Point 2.0. Make sure to go to my Twitter and read this uh, thread if you want to know more about that. But this could make the case that the US do not want, the US might actually want USDC to collapse, to pave way for their digital currency and, and, and so on, and just yeah, cause chaos in the crypto space. So that is something that goes against the thesis that the US are going to bail out Silicon Valley Bank. But again, how much collateral damage do they want to see just to crash crypto and destroy crypto. We will see about that, guys. We will find out in the next few days. Until then, I do believe that the market is, yes, I understand you want to get out of USDC. I got out of USDC myself uh, at, um, yeah, at a much higher, like at 90, 99 cents at least. Uh, but I do think, like on the balance of probabilities with a gun to my head, I do think that USDC over time is going to bounce back to $1 because they still have good assets. They still have treasury assets here. And the amount that they potentially could lose in Silicon Valley Bank is it's small. It's marginalized compared to the assets they hold and is backing USDC. The only thing to worry about is, of course, if you see contagion. You see other banks also collapse. But at that point, I'm pretty sure the US are going to step in and bail these banks out. So we will see guys, we will see very crazy times. Make sure to subscribe and activate the bell right now. Orange box still holding up the Bitcoin price. Um, yeah, crazy times. Follow me on Twitter. I'm keeping you updated on everything that's going on on Twitter and I will see you guys in the next one.